guys, Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about all of the wonderful charitable things that you can do in your own community to help animals in need. So, if you don't know who I am, my name is Jessica. I am a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer, and I am a big believer in giving back, especially to those most in need. And for me, because I'm such an animal lover, that means animals. So uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about a couple of different things that you may not have thought of that you could do to give back and to help animals in need. If you would please take a minute and give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Um, if you're at all interested in anything in this video or um, dog training, dog behavior, canine enrichment, canine nutrition, any and all things pets I cover on this channel. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. Once you do, click the bell, check all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. So let's get right into this video. Guys, it is right now, it's the holiday season, as you can tell by my decor. And of course, it's a very charitable season. It's some. It's the end of the year and we're all thinking about giving back and helping others. But I like to help all year long and this video is in no way um, boosting my ego at all. I am going to share with you some pictures um, of things that I have done throughout the years uh, because I really do believe in giving back all year long. So for me, the, the best thing I can do, I collect donations all year long for a local rescue in my area and uh, I also do monetary donations when I can to you know the Humane Society, um, National Humane Society as well as my local Humane Society and of course you know that you can do that. There's always a need for just cash, right? So if you're thinking about giving charitably, if you have some money that you want to give, definitely look at some of the national charities, but I also really encourage you to look locally and you can really see a small amount of money can make a huge difference for an animal in need locally. Um, for me, I have over the years donated to many different local charities and local animal rescues. Um, but most recently, especially in this past year, I have really focused in on a small, very, very small rescue. In fact, it's the rescue that we adopted Kim from. So what I do all year long is collect donations and I can throw some pictures up here of some donations that I have collected throughout the year and they all go to such good use. Honestly, sometimes I feel like I'm taking them too much stuff because they are a really small rescue, but she is like, no, we can use any and everything all the time. We go through so much stuff. It is amazing. If we have anything left over, if we have anything we can't use, we do provide it to other rescues. They actually work a lot with um, a couple ranches and rescues down in Mexico. So I know that no matter what I can bring to them, there is always a need for it. So definitely I would highly recommend that you doing that, but there are some other ways that you can help too. So let's go over some of the other ways in which you can help, especially locally, um, if you are interested in helping animals like I am, these are some of the things you can do. So of course there's always money, right? Monetary donations are always <laughs> welcome. They are always needed uh, because, you know, a lot of times people donate food and litter and there are so many other things that are needed, like cleaning supplies that people don't often think about. So they tend to have to use those monetary donations to fill in where they're not getting donations, which you can see is going to be, you know, if they have to pay for vet care. Of course, that's a very big expense for animals. Um, cleaning supplies, all these different types of things. Check with uh, a rescue group if you are interested in helping out a local rescue group specifically. Ask them what they need and buy for what they need or collect throughout your home, throughout maybe you, you maybe for uh, Christmas or for whatever holiday you're celebrating. 
you get your whole family together and you say, okay, this is a list of things we need. Can we all go through our homes, see what we have to donate, and then supplement by buying whatever else? What'd you get there? Oh, she had a bone to chew on. Um, so of course there's monetary donations. There are donations of just actual goods that are needed food, litter, cleaning supplies. Um, you can never, and they always need vet care, so monetary donations are amazing. But you can also donate your time. Um, you can donate your time in so much as fostering. You can donate your time in helping out at adoption events. They, they're always, <laughs> every rescue I have ever had the privilege of working with or speaking with, they are always in need of extra hands during adoption events because they have so many people and so many dogs and then the public is just coming in and they always need people to handle dogs, to kind of be, be there as greeters as the public is coming in to greet dogs, to help fill out paperwork and fill in when people need breaks. So they always need help for adoption, uh, extra hands on board for adoption events. So that's one way you can help as well. Um, I know when I first started out in animal, in the animal rescue world, my big thing, what I spent most of my time doing was TNR. And what that means is trap, neuter, return. So many areas across the country, across the world, have population issues with stray and feral cats. And it's really devastating to see what these cats living on the streets actually go through day to day and how bad of a life they can be living because it is really difficult for them, especially um, they're, you know, they, they get in fights and they don't have any medical attention. Um, they, the kittens that are born on the streets have very low um, life expectancies. The ones that do survive, they just keep populating and populating and populating. So <clears throat> going into a colony of cats and trapping them getting them spayed or neutered, and then returning them to that place where they live is one of the best things we can do for this particular situation. So we are not, we're, we're getting them the medical attention they need while they're being spayed and neutered. We're returning them um, to their home so no other cats are gonna come in and take over that space. And I could do a whole video on TNR, but really quickly, um, and then they're not continuing to populate. So uh, you can definitely seek out groups local to you who are very actively participating in TNR. You can do so many things to help out with that, whether it is um, actually trapping cats, whether it is going to, to your local community and letting the residents of your community know that, yes, we know there's a cat problem. This is what we want to do. We need your help in doing this. This is how you can help. So you can be a representative in your community to help these organizations. Um, you can be a transporter. You can again, be a foster for kittens that are trapped that can be socialized and adopted out. There are so many things that you can do. Um, and every rescue that there is needs help. Um, even if you can just go to, you know, some rescues have dogs in boarding facilities. Even if you can just go uh, once a day or once, uh, you know, or a couple of times a week and go to the boarding facility and walk dogs. There are so many things that you can do to help out and I really highly encourage you to do that. I am sure there are other things that are necessary, but really the best thing you can do is to contact uh, local rescue groups in your area, the Humane Society in your area, the Humane Society, by the way, who are, are any uh, SPCAs in your area, they are big shelters and they need they need help all the time. They need people to come in and clean cages, to walk dogs, to socialize animals, to just sit and be with the animals. You can go in and sit and read to the animals. You can go in and sit and play with the cats. There are so many things that you can do. If you don't necessarily have the money to give, that's okay. There's so much other need out there. 
I really highly encourage you to get involved and to help any which way you can. Um, let me know in the comments, post below how you're helping or if any of these ideas that I brought to you in this video have inspired you, you're gonna reach out to a local rescue, what you think you can do, what you wanna do to help out, post it below. I'd love to hear your comments because guys, this is so needed and I, I know this isn't the, probably the first time you've heard this, but maybe it's sparking something in you and it's like, oh yeah, I can go do that. Or maybe you would love to have a pet, but your living situation right now just doesn't allow it. This is gonna be a great way for you to get that interaction with animals, especially if you can just go and sit and play with the cats or take the dogs out for walks and play with them at the local SPCA or Humane Society, or even if you can foster with a local rescue group, all of these things are so necessary and so needed. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any other suggestions, any other ideas, maybe you do something for um, animals that isn't listed in this video. I would love to know about it. Please post below in the comments. I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say on this particular video. Don't forget to follow me across the socials. All of the links are below in the description. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. Oh, by the way, I did mention at the beginning of this video that I am a positive reinforcement dog trainer and I have a book for you. Yes, I do. Go ahead and check in the description of this video. Get your copy of Seven Miracle Steps to Train Your Dog. You can get a digital copy, really super inexpensive. You won't be disappointed. Go ahead and grab your copy now. Click that link in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for being here. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.